Hey, it's Liz with Big Tex Worms. Just want, kind of wanted to give y'all a tour of my house slash farm. Um, we own a half acre house that we have the worm farm here. And I'm trying to turn my entire yard into edible landscaping and a learning garden for people to come learn. So I just wanted to kind of walk you through. This is going to be kind of boring for a lot of people. But I just kind of want to show you what I'm doing. We've lived in this house for seven months, so I'm just getting started. I built this little mailbox um, area myself about three months ago. thought it turned out pretty cute. Um, I don't have anything edible planted here. Well, yes, I do. I have a little rosemary that's coming up. But everything else is just perennial salvia and then some annuals in the planter box. Then we planted a little um, apple tree here. We've got tons of trees on our property, but I wanted to add some edibles. So we've planted quite a few trees. Planted a fig right over here because it's going to get really big. So I wanted to have plenty of area to grow. And then I've just got some annuals in here, some zinnias that haven't started blooming yet. It's May 19th here. So this is just one of my flower beds here. I've got strawberries in the planter. I've got a bl uh, blueberry bush. I've got pole beans, Kentucky pole beans that are going to grow up this little teepee. It's a squash plant, some zinnias, more strawberries, lavender, rose. Those are just dianthus, sweet william, some perennials. Everything in my flower beds I'm trying to either do perennials or edibles. And there's just some annuals and a little planter. Again, more strawberries, salvia, um, sedum. That's Abby. She's not included in the edibles. Um, and then we have a hydrangea. It hasn't started blooming yet. I'm dying for it to start blooming. And then a squash plant. More squash, more cucumber. I've got another little trellis that some pole beans are going to grow up. And then I have a very sloppy raised bed over here that my chickens dug out. I have a raspberry bush, blackberry bush, pumpkin that came up. What's that, Abby? What is that? Kale? Nope, it's charred. Close. Um. And then I've got my tomato plants over here. And then I have a pomegranate tree that I haven't planted yet. And just two tomato plants over here because this is on the side of the house that gets really warm. Tomatoes like heat. So, okay, so now I'm going to walk over here. We're doing construction at our house. That's what's going over on over there. And I just have these planter boxes with annuals in them. My husband made me these planter boxes for Mother's Day and put up the cedar shutters as well. Um, just perennials over here. Got some salvia and I think that's sedum. I'm not sure. Okay. Oh, in this planter box, I've got impatience because it's sh real shady. And then I planted, I don't know if you can see, um, this center planter box is going to be carrots. And they're coming up really good. Okay. I'm going to keep walking. This is like the side entrance to our house over here. And do not judge me because my um, flower beds over here are enormous. And they are overtaking me with weeds and vines and stuff but I do have a couple squash plants coming up really good and all that green right there that you see is beets I kind of just broadcast and it didn't work out too well but we'll see how it goes they're not done yet more squash plants and I have like 40 potato plants coming up as you can hear we live next to a pretty busy road I put um, red potatoes and white potatoes. Again, on this flower bed, it's huge too. I've got more potato plants growing over here. A couple squash plants and stuff. It really needs to be weeded and I've done a terrible job. These flower beds are huge, huge, too big. It's hard for me to take care of. And then in these little planters, I've got annuals, but I also planted cilantro. In here and they the cilantro is like I've shared it with so many people and it is so 
yummy, wonderful, wonderful. So you can just intermix your herbs in your planters. Cars are going by here a million miles an hour. I have a, down here, this is the side of our property, we have a big mulberry tree that has mulberries on it. Very exciting, I love mulberries. Makes very awesome jam. And then up here, we have our apple tree. Yay, apples! Can't wait to see how they taste. It is just full of apples. Look at those. I can't wait. I'm so excited. This has been here for a long time. Then we have some mint over here. I learned the hard way to always plant mint in a container because they will take over your flower beds. So I have chocolate mint here, which is wonderful. It smells like a York peppermint patty. And then I have the spearmint here. It makes great mojitos. Okay, keep walking. We've got a grapevine here. It does not have very many grapes on it. It was kind of sickly when we moved in. I've had to put a lot of compost tea on it. So I'm just nursing it back to health. We have grapevine other areas of the house that have tons of grapes on it. This is just not one of them. This is going to be my herb garden. I have another video that I showed you how I use beer bottles to make it. And the only herbs I have growing in there right now are is oregano. I have, I've kind of ignored this one. I've done a better job of keeping it weeded, but I haven't planted very much in it yet. Then over here, this is my back porch area. It's a little bit messy right now. I'm sorry. It's got planters planted. That's my husband coming outside. And over here, I have just um, perennials. I don't have anything edible growing in here yet. Okay, so now we're going to walk out to, oh, I have peach trees. I have like 10 peach, miniature peach trees that were here. Here's one. I'll just walk right over here, show you some of the peaches. Here's some of the peaches. They're pretty, here, I'll put my hand over here. They're pretty small, but it's going to be yummy. Okay, so now we're going to walk out and show you the worm bins. Half acre doesn't sound like a lot, but it's a large amount of property. It goes all the way over that fence, back past where my daughter's swinging, to that back fence. All the way over to where the goats are. Here they see me, so here they come. Oh my gosh, they're so fat. They've been eating all the vines next door. She can hardly walk, she's so fat from eating so much. And here come the babies running. Whoa! I'll introduce you to the babies. This is Snickers, our boy. This is Cece. Okay, they're twins. And then these are the other twins. This is Cookies and Cream. And this is Snowball. And she's kind of feisty, Snowball. And Cece's name is Chocolate Chip. We just call her Cece. And then these are the mamas over here. Okay, and then we have two chickens that my daughter is chasing through the front flower beds right now. All we have is two right now. We're going to get some more. They call them the twin twerps. Ice cream and Minnie are their names. And they're they're feisty. Here they come. Well, they're not going to come. The, the goats are chasing them off now. This is what the goats like to do. Stand and play on anything. Okay, so now back to the worm bins. These are my two main worm bins. Doesn't seem like very much, but uh, if you've read on my website, you know that I had to basically start over with worm composting this past summer. In 2010, I lost 250 pounds of worms due to circumstances outside of my control. Um, and I had to start over with about 10 pounds of worms. So I'm... Hi, Snickers! He's jumping on me. So this is... These are my two main worm bins. And I just keep them in coarse watering troughs. And I just drilled some holes in the bottom to let out excess moisture, like down here. And then I have lids on them to protect them from the elements. This is what the inside of my bin looks like. And I basically just divide the bin up um, in my brain into two halves. So I work one side and then I put new bedding on the other side. And then 
when this when one side is complete then I'll start feeding on the other side so this side over here is ready and um, you can see it's mostly composted it's pretty thick it's got tons of worms in it so now I'm gonna stop feeding over here on the right side and I'm gonna start working my worms over here that's why I put this Let's see if any have made it over here yet there's a couple down there that are making their way over here, but I'll just gradually over the next few weeks start just feeding on this side to work, get my worms over here, and then I'll start harvesting over here. And this one, I'm doing the same thing. You can see over here um, that this side's pretty well composted. See the way it looks different. It just looks more dense and ready. And then this side over here, it's just new bedding. See, it's more coarse. Okay. Then, this is our, just our little barn. And when I harvest my worms, I harvest once a week. And when I harvest, this is my big harvester that I use. And then, um, when I prepare orders, I prepare them once a week and I put them in buckets like this in the barn. And that way, when it comes time to ship, I already have them ready to go. Um, because harvesting and getting the orders ready takes me about two to four hours to get all the buckets ready. And then it takes me another hour and a half or two hours to get them packaged and shipped and everything. So I do it on different days so that I don't have to spend all day one day getting orders ready to go out. So this is where I keep them in here and it's, it's dark and they do fine in here. So I just harvest once a week. Then this is where I store my castings and you can see it's kind of low. I just keep them in a 35 gallon barrel here. And I always leave food, even in the castings, because that way, if there are any worms, it'll wrangle them up where the food is. And then I still have these two barrel composters that I use. And um, the two horse troughs are basically, I use those for worms that I sell. Because I keep those troughs very sterile. I only feed... Um, certain foods. I feed watermelon, I feed corn, and um, I feed manure, and that's it. Um, the rest of my more scraps and stuff go into these. They either go into my compost pile or they go into these barrels because um, I've just discovered that when I'm having bins outside, um, when I feed scraps, it introduces a lot of bugs to the worm bins. And I don't like to ship a lot of bugs to people. So that's why I, I feed differently in the bins that are gonna be shipped. Just because I don't want to send y'all a bunch of bugs. So but these are my personal bins and that I do a lot of put my scraps into. And I have a video on how I made this bin if y'all are interested in that. They probably have about five to eight pounds of worms per bin. And then it's a flow through, so I just get this castings out of the bottom. The same thing goes for this bin over here. Same thing. I just have paper and food in here. So, ultimately I'll have probably, by the end of the fall, I'll have two to four more of those horse troughs full of worms. So, they, um, they multiply very quickly. So I hope you enjoyed this little tour of my house slash farm. And I hope you enjoyed getting to meet the family and the animals. And I'll post more later.